How did you get the news that Jimmy was going to be included in WandaVision? Oh, gosh. I um, Well, the funny thing was I, I, I had a meeting with uh, uh, Kevin Feige, and this was before uh, uh, WandaVision was even on the table. And they, you know, they were talking to me about, uh, you know, just would I be interested in, in, in kind of still being in the Marvel universe? And I was like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, but you know, like a lot of meetings uh, in, in this industry, you know, a lot of times they don't lead to anything. So I wasn't expecting anything from that, but I would say just like a few days later, I got the call saying that, look, there's a show that uh, they want you to be a part of. And uh, right away, I was like, yes, that was quick. Uh, certainly, I will do it, you know. And then they called me in and, and Jack Schaefer, the head writer, broke down the entire concept of WandaVision to me. And, uh, and uh, yeah, to say that I was blown away would be an understatement. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so weird and so uh, wild and so smart and so, uh, so fun. And I was just ready to, uh, ready to uh, bring Jimmy Woo back. So as a former latchkey kid, I used to love coming home after school and I love yes. a bunch, et cetera. So I want to know for you, if you could put your life in an old sitcom, what would it be? Mm. Uh, I was a latchkey kid too. <laughs> I was a latchkey kid too. So I watched a lot of sitcoms. Um, um, I, I mean, there, there wouldn't just be one. I, I, I think in the past I've said the Dick Van Dyke show because that's one of my, uh, you know, all time favorites. Um, there was a show called It's Gary Shandling Show. I don't know if you remember that. It's but the, I, thing, the Gary show. You know, the opening <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah, that's one of my all time favorites. You know, if I could just be, you know, be in that world, that would be really cool. Um, Gosh, All in the Family, The Jeffersons was uh, one of my, Sanford and Son was one of my absolute favorites. Uh, uh, I was just so obsessed with Red Fox. Um, gosh, but I, but I would say it's Gary Shandling's show. That, 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 that's one, that one was similar to WandaVision in that it really broke the rules, you know. Very true. I love that yeah. show. So, okay, let's talk Jimmy Woo and him coming back in. So everyone has been talking about Jimmy's whiteboard. And as yeah. someone who loves breaking things down and lists, I love Jimmy's board where all the questions that the audience is wondering are right there. So when you see elements like that in a script or things like that, does it immediately draw you into, oh, the audience is gonna love that. Oh my God, they're gonna be so excited by those little- You know, you know I, I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't even thinking that at the time. I was literally thinking that this is exactly what Jimmy is thinking and what their whole crew is thinking because uh because yeah i mean they're just as perplexed you know at, at this point in the story so uh but to see that the uh, to see the audience acknowledge it once the shows are aired how much that board was reflecting every question that they had i think it's just so cool and and, and part of what makes this show so fun to me is to to hear about the audience's theories and 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 their you know their uh, just responses to things. I, I just think it's it's just so engaging. And, uh, but that's like the beauty of Marvel. So we see Jimmy obviously at the mid season break. As much as you can share, will we get to see him a lot more through the second half? Is he going to be right there in the pocket? Oh gosh, uh, I can't share too much. But um, but I will say that 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 uh, you know, there's a good chance that he'll be around. You know, I mean, he he is on the case, so so uh, he's fig trying to figure it out, much like uh, Monica and Darcy and and and, uh, and many of them are trying to figure it out. So so we're not gonna he's not gonna disappear out of nowhere. Uh, uh, but he he uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot more work to be done. I'll just put it that way. So in researching Jimmy's Marvel history, I found that he was one of the early Asian characters that wasn't necessarily stereotypical in how he was presented, not just for the communist mu movement of the yeah. 50s. How would you like to see Jimmy 
if it were to happen, develop overall as a character? And would you like to see him maybe go to the dark side? <laughs> well, that would be really interesting because uh, one of the things I love most about playing Jimmy is that he is such a uh, kind of an oddball character in a way. I mean, he's very, he's very sincere and earnest and, and, and very sweet in, in a way, you know, and, and uh, uh, he's, not, he's not your typical TV FBI agent, you know, uh, he, he's not uh, an alpha male uh, like that. But at the same time, he is very good at what he does. And uh, I think it would be cool to see him continue to be very good at what he does and to see his, his caseload get, uh, get weirder and, and, and to see these puzzles get more uh, difficult to solve. Uh, I think that would, be, that would be great. And in wrapping up, what would be a one word description of what fans have to look forward to um, for the next few episodes of WandaVision? Hmm, a one word description. Um, um, oh gosh, that, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. I would just say, uh, um, answers. Answers. I like that.